West Asia is sitting on a knife's edge, waiting for Iran to attack and suffering in the suspense on when and how that attack will come. It's been almost two weeks now, two weeks since Israel strikes in Lebanon and Iran. It was an escalation. Iran said it will retaliate. The region and the world began preparing for it. Flights are being diverted almost every day now. Iranian proxy Hezbollah has been firing rockets into Israel. Today, Hamas fired two rockets towards Tel Aviv from Gaza. The Americans are sending more warships in anticipation, but Iran is yet to strike. Every day, new reports, new assessments are released. The latest one says this, Iran and its proxies could strike within 24 hours. That is the latest assessment. And the targets could be well beyond Israel. It could be the Americans too. We do share the uh, assessment made, made by our Israeli counterparts that something could happen uh, as soon as this week by Iran and uh, its proxies. The U.S. has a big presence in West Asia, and it's beefing up its defenses. First, they sent an aircraft carrier with 35 fighter jets. Now they're deploying a guided missile submarine. It is called the USS Georgia. It is being deployed in this region in West Asia. Clearly, the Americans are concerned, and with good reason. They have multiple bases and extensive military assets in this region. They've been coming under attack ever since the Israel-Hamas war began last year. Let me show you some numbers. During the Gaza war, the U.S. and allied forces have faced more than 170 attacks. 102 incidents were reported from Syria, another 70 incidents from Iraq and one from Jordan. Now, these attacks have left people dead or wounded, at least 145 U.S. military personnel dead or wounded in these attacks. The most recent attack happened just eight days ago on the 5th of August. And what was the target? The Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, it is used by the U.S. and its allies. And who is behind these attacks? In most cases, it's Iranian proxies. As Israel intensifies attacks on Gaza, these proxies target America and its military assets. So far, all of this has, has been a low-intensity conflict, but now things could change. That is the fear, that Iran would order its proxies to scale up these operations and to strike U.S. military assets with greater force. The Houthis in Yemen are already issuing threats. Our operations towards the occupied Palestine to target the Israeli enemy, our operations in the seas, the inevitable and upcoming response operation, as well as coordination with the Axis in any joint operations. So American military bases remain vulnerable. So does Israel, which is obvious. If Iran, Iran attacks, Israel will top the list of targets. After all, Tehran wants to extract revenge for the death of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. He was the political chief of this terrorist group. Haniyeh was killed on Iranian soil, inside Iran's capital city of Tehran. Mossad agents had planted a bomb in his apartment. This bomb was planted two months back and detonated when the Hamas leader arrived there. Israel has not claimed the operation. They've not taken responsibility. It seldom takes credit for overseas operations. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. There is little doubt that Israel did it. And now it is bracing for a direct attack. We take seriously the statements and remarks by our enemies. And therefore, we are at peak preparedness for attack and defense. And we will act according to the instructions of the political level. Like I said, it's not clear when and how Iran will attack. It's not clear what the scale of the attack would be. But Israel is not waiting to find out. It, it is issuing warnings. It says targeting the civilian population would be crossing a red line. Reports say Israeli leaders are also mulling other options, like considering a preemptive strike on one of the Iranian proxies. Talk about making a bad situation worse. This could easily spiral out of control. Western diplomats are apparently trying to prevent this. On Monday, they sent a message to Tehran. The West asked Iran to stand down. What do you think the response was? Iran shot back. Listen to their statement. Such a request lacks political logic, flies in the face of the principles and rules of international law, and constitutes public and practical support for Israel. It's hard to argue with this. And what was the West even thinking? Asking Iran to stand down and also making it public is like adding fuel to the fire instead of trying to douse it. 
No retaliation would be ideal, but expecting it would be naive. Iran believes Israel has violated its sovereignty, so it will respond, A, to restore the balance of power in the region, and B, to reassure its proxies. That would mean decisive military action. But clearly, Iran also sees the consequences, so it is offering a way out. If Israel agrees to a ceasefire in Gaza, Iran may not strike. That is the offer. Reports say Iranian officials have sent this message to the West via mediators. The price of avoiding a wider regional war is a ceasefire in Gaza. Talks between Israel and Hamas were set to resume later this week. Egypt or Qatar could host them. And Iran's offer seems to be aimed at these talks. This basically means that the ball is back in the court of Israel and its Western allies. They must deliver a ceasefire now. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative.